All right. So, to start off with, how much do you already know about countermeasures? Uh, not a lot. Um, only in the Apache I've released them. I haven't released anything off here yet. Oh, yeah. So, um, if you look down uh, at your center console, um, and you can click on the base of the stick to hide it, or hit backspace, I believe. Yep. So, underneath the middle screen is essentially your self-defense panel. Okay. So, now if we start on the top right, we've got uh, that bank of buttons and knobs is for the RWR, Radar Warning Receiver. Um, pretty much the only two buttons you'll ever need are the rightmost two, which is power and limit. Okay. So if you hit the power button, make sure it's all turned on. Wait, I'm already lost. So I've got ECM jet on the left and on the right. I've got like a little panel with five, yep. five buttons at the top, yep. but I can't see the power one. It's too blurred. So uh, the I've power button is the rightmost button. Oh yeah, and I made a beep. Yep. Cool. And then if you look under your right screen, uh, the uh, top right uh, gauge is your RWR itself. Wait, stand by, just looking for that. On the right DDI? So, underneath the right DDI. Underneath, oh, got it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, now that's your radar one and receiver scope. So that one's always active. But then nice. you can pull up a, uh, a larger version on the screen. So if you go menu one, and then straight to the right of it is EW. Yes, oh, I see, yep. Electronic warfare. Nice. And this brings up, um, uh, a large version of the RWR with more options. Right, okay. Um, and uh, just back on that uh, button panel in the middle, the second from the right button, uh, display, yes. if, if you press that, um, limit will show above it. Yes. This limits the display to the six highest priority contacts. Oh, nice, okay. So if you're in a, a busy environment, um, with a lot of emitters, uh, then you can declutter the display somewhat. Okay, that's good. Uh, and second in from the left, offset, uh, can be useful if there are a lot of emitters right on top of each other. Um, right. What this will do is, say there are like six radars all on top of each other, um, if you hit offset, the display will basically spread them out so that they're not sitting on top of each other anymore right. so you can see what they are it will okay. no longer show you accurate azimuth information so you won't be able to point at them directly but you will be able to see what they are and defend against them appropriately right yep now you'll often see that when going against a large SAM site because you'll have the main SAM batteries search and track radars, then probably at least search for uh, shorter range SAMs and AAA as well. Okay. Um, so that's about it for the RWR itself. Yep. Uh, below those buttons, um, we've got an ECM knob. Yes. This is for your self protection jammer. So right. the Hornet has an internal jamming system. Uh, it's not uh, as powerful as a dedicated pod, or certainly not a de dedicated aircraft, um, which is why it's just called self-protect. Yep. Um, but it is quite powerful for what it is. Uh, so uh, the uh, there are two main modes. There's REC and XMIP. Yep. So REC is basically receive only uh, the pod will uh, track and record radars that are painting you but it won't do anything about them now uh, xmit it will actively try to jam uh, radars that are attempting to lock um, and it's a smart jammer in that it will only transmit when it detects 
an attempted lock. Right. So um, it does mean you can't barrage jam, which is basically just screaming out white noise all the time. But um, it uh, can give you a few more miles uh, to close in on hostile radar. Right. Um, one note about it, though, is when it is transmitting, it will drown out your own radar. Okay. Uh, so um, if you see on your radar scope jammer on, it means you know, your own jammer is transmitting and your radar is being forced into standby. Okay. Yep. So uh, you can't jam and track at the same time. And then just to the left of that knob, we have the dispenser switch. Yep. So this controls the countermeasure dispenser buckets, uh, which are mounted below the, each air intake. Right. Uh, in the top bypass position, um, this is sort of a, uh, an emergency reversion mode, where the countermeasure switch on the throttle will dispense one flare or one char when moved aft or forward, respectively. Right, yep. In the central on position, uh, the system is in its main smarter mode, where it makes use of countermeasure programs, which we'll go into next. Okay. Uh, so this will let you set up uh, specific delivery programs for what you want, rather than just one for each button press, you can have a pattern. Right. So if you've got your RWR up on your uh, you know, on one of your DDIs, uh, RWR would be menu to get to EW early. Uh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Put that up. So yep, yep, yep. So you see along the top, you've got a whole bunch of uh, codes. Yes. So the one we're interested in is the uh, rightmost one, ALE-47. Right, which is cross topped Yep. Yep. So if you box that... Box. And then come down uh, to... No, the I can't box it. Okay. Come down to the bottom... Uh, actually, what is your dispenser switch? Uh, what position is it in? I can't tell if it's... Can I move it around? It's not going to cause any problems? Yeah. Because I can't tell if it's... Uh, okay, it was off. Yeah. So, uh, the ALE-47 is your... Um, basically, your dispenser buckets. Um, okay. So, the All system right. will go through um, a short bit, and then it'll show standby under ALE-47. Uh, it's gone to standby. Yep. Yep. So, now, at the bottom of that screen, you'll see Mo. Mode. Click that once. Clicked man one. Yep. So, uh, the system is now in manual release for program one. So okay. now we can box ALE 47. Boxed. And we get a little bit of extra information. So yes. we've got Charlie Foxtrot on the left and 0201 on the right. Yes. So this shows. Um, how many countermeasures we currently have remaining. So, chaff and flares, and then um, expendable jammers, which are not currently locked. Right, okay. And we've also got uh, a new option just to the right of ALE 47. Yes, arm. Yep. Yep. So, if you hit arm, arm, pressed. Yep, it brings up a, a new page for us. Yes. And this is where we can program um, the different uh, release programs. So there are five manual release programs that you can set up. Um, and there are three ways to deploy them. So countermeasures on the throttle, countermeasures switch aft will uh, deploy whatever your currently selected program is. Switch forward will deploy program 5 at all times. Okay. And that big red dispense button on the left canopy rail will yep. uh, dispense program 6, which we can't edit. Okay. 
So um, if you remember in uh, Top Gun Maverick, when they're dodging all the SAMs and whacking that button, yeah. that's, that's basically what they're doing. It's, uh, it's a last ditch emergency dump pretty much everything button. Right. Help, help. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, we can see what the program is doing uh, on in the center of the screen. So, you've got CMDS Prog 1. Yep. And around there we go. So, you've got Chaff, Flare, Other, Other, RPT, Int. So this tells you how many of each countermeasure type you're going to drop, how many times they're going to drop, and what the spacing between each drop will be. Right. So um, if you could tell me what uh, each one of those numbers is right now. If they've got chuff and one, flare and one, other zero, other two zero, repeat ten, interval one. Yep. So what that program will do is it will drop one chaff and one flare Ten times, one second apart. Okay. Um, so that's it's sort of a catch-all, uh, sort of a, uh, a preemptive program. Yeah. So um, you would use that when you're running in on a target, and you're not entirely sure what might come at you, because um, yeah. you're dropping chaff and flare at the same time. You're sort of expecting. IR or radar threats. Yep. Um, so you can only use that, well, twice really, because you've only got 28 flares, is that right? And if it's going to repeat it 10 times times one, yeah, don't use that too often. Um, so for some reason, um, the, uh, the Hornets, and I think most of the aircraft in DCS right now, don't load in with full countermeasures. Okay. So you can have up to 120 of either countermeasure right. or any amount of split between them. Okay, so, so 60 you could 60 have 60, yeah. 60, 120, 0, or anywhere in between. Right. Um, so uh, when we rearm later, we'll uh, set it up so that you have a decent spread of them. Okay. Um, I found you don't tend to use nearly as much chaff as flares, so right. I tend to go with um, at least 70 to 80 flares, um, and the rest chaff. So uh, to edit these programs, what we'll do is uh, you'll see down the left hand side, we've got chaff, flare, and we can ignore the others. Yep. So if you box flare... Boxed. You can then use the arrows on the right to change the number of flares uh, yep. to drop. So they can go anywhere from 0 to 100. Okay. Yep. Yep. So um, for program 1, I like to set it up to drop just one shaft, no flares, and then leave the repeat and interval the same. Okay. Um, so... Uh, from talking with Raz, the the way it seems chaff works is uh, you want to be strategic with it. So um, most radars will e be able to tell the difference between the jet and just a big cloud of radar returns, yep. which is what you will get if you just dump a whole lot of chaff all at once. Yep. So this program where we're dropping one bundle every second for 10 seconds um, should be about perfect combined with maneuvering to defeat a marginal attack. Right. Um, so basically, if you get fired on by a red eye missile, you'll break into it, turn cold while stumping this program. Right. Out of interest, how do you know if it's red or, or not? <laughs> Um, so that's what the RWR will do. So uh, okay. yep. if it's a radar missile, the RWR will be going deedle 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 and screaming yep. at you. Yep. Um, if it's an IR, the missile will just launch and you won't get any warning. Wonderful. Okay. Cool. So now that we've set that program up to just drop one shaft, 
Yeah, uh, make sure you hit save on the bottom. Saved, yep. yep. Didn't change anything, but yep. Yep, so that just makes sure that this program is saved now that we've changed it. Yep. And then we can hit step to go to step. program two. Program two selected. And uh, it's probably about the same as what program one was. Except the interval. Yeah, what's the interval this time? 0 0.5. Yeah, so one shaft, one flare, 10 times, half a second apart. Yep, okay. Yeah. So um, what I'd like to set up my program two is, is essentially the exact same as program one, just for flares. All right, so chaff down to zero. Yep, flares one. Repeat Oops. 10, interval 1. Interval 1, so... How do I change the interval? So, uh, repeat and interval are on the right, below the arrows. Ah, oh, there it is, right, yeah. Uh, so, interval is going to go to 1. Mm -hmm. Oops, okay, yeah, 1. Set yeah. and saved. Cool. And you can set the interval anywhere from quarter of a second to 5 seconds. Right, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. And then uh, we'll step all the way over to program five. Program five, yep. So this is the program that will fire anytime you go Canamation switch forward. Right, yep. Um, and I like to use this one as my um, sort of uh, reactive uh, program. Not quite a panic button, but um, when I need to get a lot of stuff out right away so I've set my program 5 up for 2 chaff 2 flares 5 times quarter of a second apart Standby. 2 times and a quarter of a second interval down 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 ok so in half a second you're going to lose it all right um, so in just over one second, is uh, it repeats five times. Oh, five times repeat. I've got two here. All right. Yeah. Uh, so one and a quarter seconds. It'll dump ten sharp and ten flares two at a time. Okay. Cool. Cool. And now, now, once you save that. Saved. Yep. Um, keep hitting step until you're on whichever whichever program you want uh, countermeasures after to be. So whichever program you leave it on is the one you'll get on countermeasures aft. For what we're doing today, I'd set it to program two, which is yep. that uh, preemptive flare program. Yep. And what we'll do is, when we're running in on our target, when we're about five seconds away from weapons release, we'll go countermeasures aft, and it'll start a slow dump of flares as we come over the target. Right. So okay. if there's anyone down there thinking about getting smart with a man pad, we'll start giving them problems. Okay, and the selected programs uh, pull back on the counter measures button, eh? Yep. So yep. Okay. aft is whichever Select. program, one to five. Yep. Forward is always five. And the wall switch is always program six, which we can't okay. edit in here. Got it. Um, there is an add-on, which I can link to you. Um, it's called DICE. Um, and it, uh, it lets you set up these programs from the special menu, rather than have to go into the jet and fiddle around with these every single time. Nice, nice. Yeah, because this is a bloody faff to do yep. every single mission. Yeah, um, agree. And uh, DICE will also let you edit program six. Oh, okay. And then uh, you just hit uh, return to get back to the RWR page. Yep. And um, down the bottom left, we also have a step button here, which lets you cycle through uh, the programs without having to go into the editing page. Okay, on the screen, does it show which program you run? Yep, so in the top center, under early 47, we've got man 2. And Yep, okay. So that's manual release program two. So now if you hit mode again. Yep. Mode. So SA2. I believe that's. 
Ah, yeah. So that's semi-automatic program two. Yep. So what this is going to do is now uh, the jet will analyze the current threat. Now, um, basically, what radars are painting you, um, whether or not they're locking you and such. And it will pick a program that it thinks will be the best defense, but leave it up to the pilot to actually dispense it. So in this case, you would just go can of measure switch R, and the jet will give you whatever program it thinks right. is best. If we go in mode again, we've got auto. Yep. So this will automatically start chucking out countermeasures whenever the jet feels under threat, but it can be very wasteful. So uh, okay. um, I attempt to use manual only. Right. And then mode again goes to standby and then back to manual. Man two back. Yep. Yep. And then again, that step button to the left of mode will cycle through whichever programs. Right. Cool. So that's countermeasures. I just had a beep and the uh, E3 thing seemed to move. I don't know what the E3 is, but. Yeah. So um, E3 is uh, an E3 Century AWACS. Okay. So, the uh, RWR scope here uh, shows bearing and threat, not range. So, that E3 is currently at about your uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock. Yep. Uh, and on the very outer ring, which is uh, least threat. Okay. So, he's over there to the west. Right. Yep. So, so that's um, not distance, that's just yeah. the so scale of, of danger. So the way the RWR works is there are four antennas pointing out at the four corners of the aircraft. And the system essentially analyzes the different signal strengths between those antennas. So say, now you've got two antennas on the nose pointing at sort of 45 degrees. If both those antennas have the same radar at the same strength, then the system will interpret that as the radar being direct front. Yep. Whereas if it's stronger in one than the other, then it's off to one side. Right. Yep. So, so that's how it gets azimuth, and then it analyzes the radar signal itself. So like its frequency, its PRF, and all that jazz. Uh, and attempts to classify it against its database. Right. Um, and there's a whole bunch of uh, symbology uh, that uh, I'll have to actually uh, pull a page to go through. Um, oh, yeah. So each radar type has a two character identifier. Um, most of them make uh, some deal of sense. So, like, E3 is an E3 Sentry. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, 2-1 is a MiG-21. 2-9 is a Fulcrum. Yeah. Um, Foxtrot Sierra is Fansong, and so on. Right. Um, and then there's a bit of extra symbology. Right. But, uh, Learn that. <laughs> so basically, the, the closer in towards the center uh, the contact is, the higher threat. Okay. And um, priority contacts will also flash. So if they're locking or launching, they'll be flashing at you. Right. Okay. So, so yeah, I feel like moving on to weapons and targeting pod. Sounds good. Cool. So I'll get you to pull up the rearming menu. Okay, yep. And uh, we can also uh, top up our flares uh, for now. All right. So um, a good uh, medium is 7050 flares chaff. Um, you could go up to 8040 um, if you are expecting a lot of infrared and not so much radar. Yep. Uh, which is uh, what I'm going to take. All right. So. Uh, as for weapons, 
on station two, I'll get you to take uh, two. Uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, two times GBU twelves. Two times GBU twelve. So that's is that a rack? Yep. So one, that's BAU thirty three. Two yep. times GBU twelve. Got it. Then on station three, under AG missiles, AG I'll get missile. you to take uh, LAU 117 with AGM 65 Echo. Uh, got it. Yeah, so that's a laser Maverick. On station four, under pods, you'll take the AN ASQ 228 AT flare targeting pod. Yeah, on. Uh, section 5 will be a fuel tank. Five for the fuel tank. Yep. Station 6 is whatever you like. Alright. Station 7, under AG missiles, is the AGM 65 Foxtrot. AGM. Under AG missiles? Yep. Right at the bottom. 65 Foxtrot. Okay, I've got two, uh, the. IIR ASM or the laser ASM? The uh, Maverick F. The IIR. Maverick F. Oh, got it, yep. Yeah. We uh, took the other one on station 3. Okay. And then station 8 under bombs will be a BRU 33 with 2 times GBU 38 JDAM. GBU 38. Uh, I've got BR 55 with 2 times GBU. Ah, down. Yes, my yep. bad. Yep. Okay, on. Cool. And those are your GPS bombs. And nice. then wingtips and smoke as you wish. Gotta have the smoke. Gotta have Request the smoke. refueling. Yep. Feel like uh, green today. Request Copy. rearming. And. Copy. Uh, so anything on the on the on the tips. Yeah. Slidewinder nine X-rayers. Cool. Sweet. Uh, okay on that, fill up the fuel a bit more, okay. The ECM, what's it, uh, XMIT I think it is, is that, uh, that's on REC at the moment, receive only, right? Refueling complete. Yeah, so, okay. um, for DCS purposes, REC is the same as standby. Okay. And uh, we won't be going up against uh, any radar threats, at least for now, so you can just leave it there. Look. And uh, I might as well explain that big scary ECM jet button. Um, that's, uh, yeah. that's an emergency switch uh, that will dump all of your flares all at once. Rearming complete. Um, in the case that you needed to make a belly landing. Because yeah. each flare is essentially a slug of magnesium hmm. um, and some other black helicopter shit that we don't have to worry about. Um, oh. So, and they're mounted on the belly of the aircraft. So, if you can imagine grinding your belly down a runway, those are gonna ignite pretty they're quickly. Up a bit. Yep. Yep. So, um, so, and the use of it is just hold it down or you just press it. Uh, yeah. So it would be mushroom on weight off wheels, press it. All the flares come off. Okay. Um, you've probably probably seen some photos or footage of like uh, a C-130 or a C-17 dumping flares. Yeah, it's awesome. Pretty much that from your belly. No. Nice. Yeah. Okay, I'm rearmed. Cool. So if you look down by your right hip, um. You know where your uh, radar and INS knobs are? Um, I think so. Is that flare, RT, all that stuff? Yep. No? Yep. So, um, those three switches, flare, LTDR, LST, uh, NFLR. Yep. Uh, so these are our, no, basically our targeted pod uh, power controls. Okay. So. You can flick the FLIR switch into standby or on. Um, either one works. Right. Um, I just flick it all the way to on. And this will start 
cooling down the pod. Right. Um, and uh, it will remain stowed until we tell it otherwise. So you can just put it all the way to on. Um, once you have been using it, um, if you want to restow it, you just flick that switch back to standby. Okay. Um, in real life, um, it's best practice to leave the pod stowed unless you're actively using it because it is a camera lens and you don't want to get bugs and birds and shit in there. Right, okay. Um, the next one across, um, LTD slash R, um, is the uh, laser, laser rangefinder designator. Um, in the real jet, this is an electronically held switch, uh, which will only stay in the arm position if your weight up wheels um, air to ground master mode um, and master arm on. And it right. resets after every time you use the laser. Okay. So um, we can just leave that there for now. Um, incidentally, uh, because I have the wing wing um, hornet panels, uh, my version of that switch physically uh, will hold uh, the virtual switch in the arm position no matter what. Oh, uh, right. Okay. But, uh, so you'll probably have to keep flicking that. Yep. Um, and the next one across um, is the laser spot tracker. You can just flick that all the way up to on. On. Yep. So uh, the laser spot tracker uh, will allow the pod to seek out a laser spot from another source and then lock onto it. Okay. Cool. Now, so it'll take uh, a couple of minutes for the pod to cool down. So if you go onto one of your DDIs and hit menu once. Menu, yep. Now, in the top left, we now have a new option clear. Yep. So if you hit that. Yep. And tell me what you see. Uh, I see what looks like a, like a, nearly like the heads-up display. Yeah. So this means the pod has um, cooled down as operational, um, but it's currently stowed. Okay. If you saw not timed out on that screen, then that means it's still uh, cooling down. Okay. So um, before we go any further, um, I'll. Uh, just take you through setting up your SLU control again. Yes. So if you come into adjust controls, access commands. Adjust controls, access commands, yep. Scroll down to throttle designator controller. Yes, to accesses, yep. Yeah. So if you pull that control straight up, Yeah, uh, if I pull it straight up, the joy Y goes off to the right, and that's vertical axis. Okay. And then pull it all the way to the left. Left. Oh, gosh, they both move. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, so the X goes all the way to the left, but my <laughs> Y's all over the place. Y's moving quite a bit as well. Yeah. Um... You should be able to get it into a position where Y is center. Yeah, so all, all fingers off. It's, it's It just seems very, very uh, touchy. So not touching the button. As soon as I put my finger on it, Y is flashing a little bit. But yeah, Y is all over the place. Yeah. And I'm, I'm hardly even moving it. All right. So uh, click on Joy Y and then come down to Access Tune. Access Tune. And uh, what uh, curvature and dead zone do you currently have? Uh, dead zone, I've got six. Curvature, I've got 30. Mm -hmm. Inverts on. Yeah. Uh, we'll take that dead zone of yours up to at least 30, I think. 30 is selected. Yeah. And then we'll do the same for X as well. Same for X. 30 and coverage is 30 as well, right? Yeah, um, and I think take your saturation Y for both axes down to 80. Down to 80 on saturation Y. Oh god, it's hard to get to 80. It's 81.79. 81. 
Uh, so you can select the text itself and type it in manually. Ah, uh, cool. That's easy. <laughs> yeah. AD selected on that one, and Y as well. Yeah. Uh, Gene axis combo, and that's the saturation Y as well. Correct. Down to 80. Selected. Cool. So, hopefully there'll be a bit more wiggle room for uh, um, clicking that control in without slewing it off to the side. Okay, so just to confirm, so my Joy X has got a dead zone, my other one doesn't. Or should there be a dead zone on both? There should be a dead zone on both. At oh, least okay. 30. Uh, dead zone, sorry, there's one. Alright, sorted. Why is my red, what do the red dots mean? Red uh, okay. dots? Yeah, when I'm looking at, so I'm looking at the Axis Tune panel. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, okay, okay yeah. this. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know what you mean now. I'm not quite understanding what they're showing me. So when I move around the, when I move that button, mm -hmm. uh, they're jumping all over the place. So the black square is your physical control. Yep. And the red dots are what um, is getting actually sent to DCS. Right. I think I might have to increase uh, the dead zone a bit because I literally just put my finger on it and pull a little bit and those red dots are moving quite a lot yeah uh, but let, let, let me see what happens I'll, I'll keep it with what you've said for now mm -hmm. okay, give that a shot okay and uh, it may also just come down to practice with clicking that button directly in and not moving it around um, what I tend to do is I only touch that control unless I'm actually slewing Right, okay. So, uh, like, I'll click it and take my hand, my finger completely off it. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. So, now that the pod's warmed up, now we can actually slew it around on the ground. So, oh, cool. Um, now, before we unstow it, I'll just take you for a little bit of a tour around the bezel controls. So, in uh, the top left, um, we've got... Wait, yeah. what, what do you mean by bezel controls? So, no, the controls around the edge of the screen for the pod. Oh, okay, yep, yep. So, uh, we'll start in the top center. We've got TV minus 180L. Yep. So, this uh, shows you your current um, image mode and the current azimuth the pod is looking. So, it's currently in day TV mode which is basically just a black and white camera. Yep. Um, and it's looking at 180 degrees behind us to the left. So basically completely stowed. Yep. Um, when it's actually in use, this will tell you um, how far off the nose the pod is looking, say 30 degrees left. Right, yep. Uh, RTCL, I've never had to use. Yep. Uh, moving around, to it's boxed at the moment, eh? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Moving around to the right, uh, VVSLV is Velocity Vector Slave. Right. So if you were to box that, uh, the pod will slave its uh, its line of sight to your Velocity Vector. Okay. So wherever that little plane goes, your pod looks as well. All right. Uh, UFC with a bunch of numbers next to it is your laser spot tracker and designator codes okay so this um you can only uh, adjust the spot tracker while on the ground uh, because the laser won't arm but once the laser is armed you'll be able to adjust its code as well okay so that's the code the pod will look for and the, the code it will shoot on right and uh, next one i've never had to use um that 150 in the bottom bottom right is your current parametric altitude. Okay. Uh, and uh, over in the bottom left corner is your current airspeed in knots and mark. Right, yep. So that combined with um, that uh, velocity vector and horizon line um, is sort of a uh, 
situational awareness tool. So while your head's down staring at the camera feed, you can also glance at uh, those symbologies to give you an idea of what Jet's actually doing. Right, okay. Now, and we'll see that once we get in the air. Um, along the bottom row, DC LTR is declutter. Yeah. And if you hit that, um, it will remove those aircraft symbologies that we just talked about. Yep. And unbox it, bring them back. Yep. Um, LST puts the pilot into laser spot track mode, um, which we'll talk about. Yep. Um, and then up the left side, we've got uh, focus and zoom. Yep. Uh, focus, we don't need to worry about because it's not a real camera. Good. And zoom is the current zoom factor of the camera. Okay. Um, and there's also a uh, one degree floating in there, and that tells you the elevation of the camera. It is looking one degree up at the moment, is it? Correct. Okay, but behind us. Yeah. Because of the angle of the aircraft. Mm hmm Okay, yep. And we, uh, we can also completely control the pod, or mostly control it, just with HOTAS controls. Right. So, if you castle switch right, or castle switch towards whichever screen you've got it on. Oh, we almost must have gone. Uh, castle switch right. Yep. I've got diamond in the right screen now. Yep. So, now our TDC and the HOTAS controls are assigned to this screen. So if you double tap your nose wheel steering button. Oh yeah, I thought I got a picture. Yep. So this puts the pod into snowplow mode, which uh, slaves it to directly on uh, our flight path, looking about 15 degrees down. Right. So basically plowing in front of our aircraft. Um, and it is a fixed camera mode, not ground stabilized. But uh, when we're in the air, it can be used to essentially scan the terrain ahead of you yep. uh, for potential threats. Okay. Is this infrared? Would it light up a little bit if there's something hot? Or so no, you've got to use eyes. So we're currently in TV mode, which okay. is basically just a, uh, a two-turn camera. Yep. Now, um, uh, if we hit that uh, top center button, it will go into IR mode. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. Yep. So we'll leave it in TV for now. Yep. And then if you double tap noticeable steering again, you'll get a crosshair. That's it. Yep. So now we're in a uh, uh, inertially stabilized slewable mode. So right. if we were moving, the camera wouldn't be. It would be stabilized to the ground. Or yep. as far as... It would be stabilized to what the INS believes is the ground. Okay. Um, so you can use your TDC now to slew the camera around. So if you slew it straight up... But it's not moving. Uh, and that's my middle finger thing, right? Yep. Uh, moving a thing around, it's not moving at all. Uh, even when you push it all the way? All the way. It's so weird, does not click or anything, so I assume it's... No, it's not moving. I'll just go to my controls and see... Uh, just controls... Axis... Looking at... Uh, designator left, right. No, the lines are moving on there. Mm -hmm. But I think the the camera, uh, the, my picture staying the same. It's coming locked. So, do you have a crosshair? I have the crosshair. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's not moving at all. Well, nothing's changing when I pull that button up and down, left and right. And just to confirm, that's my root finger. Eh? Uh, nothing's changing there. Am I misunderstanding this button? Um, what I'll get you to do is bind now your arrow keys on the keyboard to uh, throttle designator controller up, down, left, and right. 
Under oh. Hotas. Under Hotas. Wow, I have read things. Um, throttle designator, left, right, keyboard. Okay, it's already bound, but I'm going to change it to the arrows. So, down. No, it's not moving. Hmm. And you've got the diamond, yes? I've got the what, sorry? You've got the diamond in the top right? Fuck, that was a Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> There's no diamond. Uh, sorry. I had the diamond. That's alright. Uh, Castle switch diamond. right. Castle switch right. I have a diamond. And we have movement. Cool. With my root finger. Sweet. I'm looking at you. Nice. So uh, if you hit uh, that TV button again. TV, yep. Yep, so now we're in thermal image. Right, yep. And uh, with your left index finger, if you pull that hat switch up, you should start zooming in. Oh, yeah. Yep. And you can zoom in, I think it's five steps. That's weird because it goes zoom goes from one to two to one to two, but it's zooming in. <laughs> yeah. So now uh, the way the uh, AT FLIR works is it has now uh, three different uh, field of view steps, and then each one of those has two or three zoom levels within that. But using okay. Uh, that um, radar elevation control is the actual bind um, allows you to just plow straight through all of them right I'm starting to see what the problem is here when I move left and right camera moves left and right but sometimes it like shoots up and down mm -hmm. uh, so that's probably why what's the screen does yours do that um, I'll have to record what I'm seeing but I'm definitely moving around quite accurately. That's cool. Mm. I'm starting to suspect your hotas might just be a bit broken. Okay, which excellent. Would, which would be unfortunate. Yep. Um, just this one button. It's, it's very uh, tricky. Yeah, it's the Thrustmaster Warthog. Um, that's really the one bad thing about it is the control that they chose for the TDC, yep. being that little nipple. Yep. Um, it's really quite bizarre. Every single other uh, sim grade HOTAS that has a TDC has it as an actual like PlayStation mini stick, which is what it should be. Right, yeah. Not this little mouse nub thing. Yeah. So if you zoom all the way in and just have a, a look around my jet. Yes. Yeah, you'll see different areas are brighter and darker than others. Yep. And because we're in IR mode, that means they're actually hotter or colder. Right. Bit of a bug. I'm not sure why your tires are so hot already. But yeah, that 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 uh, that is a little interesting. Yeah. Um. But uh, if you have a look at my canopy. You'll notice you can't see through it. Yes. But if you go back to TV, you can. Indeed, yep. Yeah, because uh, IR cannot see through glass. Oh, right. Okay. Huh, what's at the end of the lens? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, the, uh, I believe the lens on the pod itself is actually sapphire. Okay. So essentially the entire lens is a gemstone. Nice. Mm. Um, you uh, may have noticed the um, little prism thing under the chin of the F-35. 
No. But no? Yeah. Um, well, uh, next time uh, you get a chance, Google um, some Im images of the F-35, and it has this little uh, like pentagonal prism under its chin, and yep. that is essentially a, uh, a targeting pod camera built into the jet itself, and that whole thing is made of sapphire. Oh, that's pretty cool. Mm. Cool. And uh, now that we're slewing around, um, we've got a little bit of extra symbology. So, um, in the top right corner, uh, you'll see the coordinates and the elevation that the pod is currently looking at. Yeah, hang on a second, I'll just... Alright, if you... just sorry, repeat that again? So, um, if you see in the uh, top right corner of the screen, you'll right, see yes. a whole bunch of coordinates. So, we've got lat, long, elevation, and grid. Yes. So those are the coordinates that the pod is currently staring at. Okay. So if you find something interesting, uh, you can pass these numbers on to someone else so that they can look at the same thing. Right. Yep. Or even attack the same thing. So say you're out of weapons, but you found a target of uh, interest, you can pass along these numbers and someone else can come and attack it. Nice. Okay. Hmm. And uh, do you know what uh, the grid numbers actually are? Uh, the normal coordinates looks like decimal, but the grid ones, no, I don't know how they worked that out. Yeah, so um, the northing and easting is um, good old fashioned lat long coordinates. Yep. The grid is what's known as MGRS, Military Grid Reference System, which is a completely different. Um, global coordinate system yep. um, that uh, you can sort of think of it as so the globe is broken up into different shaped zones, it's a little bit weird but for, uh, for our purposes you can essentially think of it as a slightly different grid pattern um, than lat long yep. but Instead of um, being divided up into degrees, they're divided up just into smaller and smaller and smaller grids. Yep. So each new digit uh, on the end of uh, that grid um, is a smaller and smaller square area. Okay. So that uh, three eight tango uh, kilo mic. That's defining the global grid square that we're currently working in. And then that string of numbers on the end of it tells you precisely which little grid square within that we're actually working. Okay. So you can think of it as um, global grid square 3-8 tango kilo mic is some arbitrary square area on the planet yep. and then zero zero is the top left corner of that yep. and then each of these numbers tells you uh, basically which coordinate within that to go to if that makes sense so would the nine two be the first box and then zooming in zero seven and then in that box three zero is it um, that sort of so uh nine is i think 90% to the right, then okay. 7 is 70% down, so I'm looking at, uh, so 920 is 90% um, of the first box, 20% of the second box, 0% uh, of yeah, the third yeah. box, Okay. Um, all going to the right, and then 732 is 70% down, Next box 30%, next box 20%. Okay. And yep. each box is basically nested within the one before it. Okay, so the way I'm thinking is you picture a, a, a chessboard. Yeah. And then each of those squares, so that would be 9 2, would be the ninth one across and probably two down. And then 0 7, in my case, would be, oh, I get the zero base. So the first square, so y that square that you've landed up on the 9 2 would then be divided into 10. So. so so then the way these ones are set up is um, the, f 
the first three digits are across, the second three digits are down. Oh, I see. Okay. Progressively getting smaller and smaller boxes. So, Got it. Um, okay. on that chessboard of, yep. say, 10 by 10, yeah. we're going nine across, seven yep. down. Then within that square, now two we're across. going two across, three, three down. And right. in the next square down, zero across, three down. Okay. And how, how close is that compete? Like, GPS is pretty, I mean, you can get pretty fine. Um, it looks like, is I it like a meter square or? I think with six digits, um, the final grid square is 10 by 10 meters. If Close we enough. had, <laughs> um, actually, no, it's 100 meters. Oh, okay. If we had, if that final string was eight digits, so basically um, yeah. yep. four digits per box, then it would be 10 meters. Yep. Five is one by one meter. Uh, okay, got it. Yeah. So uh, in the Apache, um, its um, MGRS system goes to eight characters. Okay, right. So, so 10 meter squared boxes. Yeah, so 10 meter squared, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the Hornet, um, we can actually set up to go precise coordinates. Um, in DCS currently, we can only do that with uh, lat long, not MGRS, but um, that would give us the equivalent of an egg character MGRS. Right, yeah, got it, okay. Uh, which is uh, enough to program and attack with our GPS weapon. Nice. Cool. Okay, that makes sense, yep. So, um, there's a little bit more with the pod itself. So, um, if you uh, make sure you're back in IR mode. Back to IR, yep. In the bottom, on the bottom row, all the way to the left, you've got um, WHT, white. Yes. If you hit that, it'll go black, and the picture will change. Uh, okay, so it's inverse. Yep, so you've yep. just inverted the polarity of the sensor. So yep. now, black things are hot rather than white things. I like the white hot, okay. Mm. It's uh, situational. So um, if uh, if you're looking for, say, a single tank um, running across a snowfield, then you would probably want white hot, because uh, then that one hot tank will be basically glowing against the yeah. dark background. But if you're looking for something cold against the hot background, uh, then you would invert it. Right. And um, it, it's basically just play around with it uh, until you get the best looking picture. Yep. And then uh, just to the right of that, you've got ALG um, box. LG boxed. Yep. If you unbox that, you'll get a little LG on the bottom of the left column. If you head into that, um, then up the left column, will you'll be able to manually change your level and gain. Oh yeah. Which will basically allow you to fine tune the look of the image. That's pretty cool. Yep. Yep. Now um, I find uh, this is pretty well uh, required, um, at least here on the Caucasus, um, yep. to get a usable IR image. Okay. Um, and sometimes you may find that you simply can't get a good IR image because um, the targets are just too close to the background in temperature. Uh, in which case you would need to use TV. Okay, yep. Um, also TV uh, lets you see like the actual like skin of your target. So if, uh, if you look at my nose, uh, in TV, TV you should yep. be able to read 406 on the side of my jet. Hang on, just zooming in. Uh, on the side, oh, I can see the numbers, but. Yeah. Yep. So now but I can't, I can't make them, I'm too flat against them. Yeah, so uh, go into IR. I'm in IR, yep. Huh, interesting, the numbers stay there. Yeah. They, uh, they shouldn't. they shouldn't, unless the paint's hot. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably what they're simulating there. Yeah. 
So, um, so yeah, uh, I wonder, TV. I wonder if, because mm -hmm. black, black absorbs heat, black gets hotter. So I wonder if it's because it's black, if they've modeled that, that it's got a bit warmer than something that's reflecting heat more. Yeah, they may have. But uh, generally, for the most part, and certainly against um, uh, ground units, um, IR will basically just shoot um, blocks of heat. Um, yep. It won't show you surface detail. Right. Cool. Um, that's about it for the image itself. Um, yep. But uh, for actually using the pod, um, there's uh, a little bit more. So if you slew onto the ground just in front of my jet, yep, and then go castle right. Wait, am I an IRA TV? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Castle right. Oh, I'm a stick. Castle right. Yep. Oh yeah. So your crosshair has changed to two horizontal lines and a dot. Yes. And you should have seen in the bottom of the screen. Just to, the uh, left. just to the left. Seen, I've got it, yep. Yep. So, now, this is uh, essentially what's known as area track. So, the previous mode was an INS stabilized mode. So basically, the jet knows where it is, and it knows where the ground should be, and it stabilizes the camera relative to that. Right. But here in scene mode, um, it's actually doing processing on the image itself and keeping it stationary to the camera. Ah, moving targets. Yep. Uh, well, no, not in scene mode. So this okay. stabilizes to the ground, so basically to the whole image. Okay. Um, and uh, you can see just inside your crosshair, you've got that line and one mic in it. Uh, zero mic. Zero mic. So this is your yardstick. So um, the system knows uh, basically the optics of the camera. So it's showing you this line and telling you how long that line would be on the ground where the camera is looking. Understood. Yep. So um, when we're in the air, it's probably going to be something like uh, 20 or 50 meters or something like that. Yep. But uh, it lets you sort of measure along the image. Okay, yep. Cool, and then if you go uh, castle right again... Castle right again. You'll get two little vertical lines, and they might be jumping around a little bit. Correct. So, this is point track, so this is your moving target. So what this oh. does is, it tries to lock on to an image contrast underneath the crosshair. And right. track on that. Um, in reality, it can yep. be uh, very difficult to get um, get a good track. So, if you see the ground right now, it's pretty much uniform, one yes. color. Um, there's not really a whole lot for the system to track on, which is why those lines are jumping around a bit. It's uh, getting a bit confused. Yep. Whereas, uh, if you were to castle right twice to go back to scene mode yes and then zoom in on say my gun port uh, gun port on the s on, just on your nose yep and yep. then uh, let's see got a track for me maybe not but uh, basically now uh, point track requires a good contrast uh, in order to lock but once it has that contrast it can track a moving target right uh, i lost uh, so i'm on the area or the scene at the moment mm -hmm. how did he get to the point track again uh, it so right? it, it doesn't seem like it wants to lock up on that uh, that particular image right okay so um so that's the limitation if uh, if it can't find a decent enough contrast then it can't block. Okay. And then, uh, if we're back out to uh, INR with the that big wide crosshair, this is your um, 
your INS stabilized mode again. Uh, is that the one, sorry, INR, uh, is that the one with the um, horizontal line above, below? And the f no, well, so that's, that's auto or scene. Okay, sorry, oh, I'm sorry, back sorry, um, yep. Area track or scene. So it's tracking the whole image. Right. And uh, you'll see in your HUD now, you've also got a target diamond. I do. So when you go into scene or auto, there's the area or point track, it will automatically designate the point under the crosshair as your uh, target waypoint. Okay. I'm just worried I'm a little bit lost now. So I'm in scene at the moment. I've got the diamond. If I move around, see the diamond moving and my screen moving? Yep. Uh, okay, cool. And the diamond will be moving a bit weirdly just because we're looking so close. Yeah. But, uh... So yeah, once you're in scene mode, wherever the camera is looking is where the jet is going to uh, target weapons. So rather right. than doing that ball and chain thing with the HUD, we can do it with the targeting pod. Nice. Now, uh, we may still need to do that ball and chain thing initially to get the pod looking in the right direction. Yep. But once it is, then we can generally just slew the pod around. Yeah, right. And then if we... Uh, don't want that target again. Yeah, uh, just the same. We can go nose wheel steering button to undesignate. Yep. And that will also kick the pod back out into INS stabilized mode. Right. I'm just trying to unlose myself here. So I made it. Um, on my screen, I've landed up with the 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 dime in the middle with the, the dashes. Mm -hmm. Below left and right. Yep. So this is your INS mode. Yeah. So I can't. Oh, I can move the camera around. Yep. yep. And then it was uh, castle right. Yep. Yep. Well, okay. it, it's castle towards the screen. So you can have the FLIR on any one of your three screens. So to mean. Yep. And um, so yeah, it's castle towards the FLIR screen. Right. And that's the one that you care about. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, and if you have it on the center screen, it will be grayscale, not green scale. Okay. Nice. Cool. Yeah, that's going to be a lot to remember, so I'm going to be faffing around quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, the targeting pod is uh, fairly complex, um, yes. but also very powerful. Yep, yep. So, that's the gist of the pod. Now, so why don't we go into weapons now? Into weapons, I'm gonna use my left DDI for that. Mm -hmm. And two stores, yep. Yep. So, up the top you should have 82LG, MAV, MAV-F, and J82, correct? Yep, copy, yep. Cool. So, in that order, those are your laser-guided bombs, your laser guided maverick, your yep. uh, infrared or TV guided maverick, and GPS guided bombs. Right. So, um, uh, I'll just go through the mavericks real quick. So, these are essentially a big hellfire. Hmm. Um, okay. It's, uh, does pretty much the exact same job as the hellfire, in that it's a, um, a laser or TV guided anti-tank missile. Yep. Um, the uh, the laser Maverick now is literally just a big hellfire. It's got a laser seeker in the nose and will track a, uh, a laser code um, from any designation, be it uh, your own jet's targeting pod, a jet tech on the ground, or another jet. Right. Um, the laser needs to be on the target all the way up until impact. So if you're Lasing for yourself, that means you have to keep pointing at the target until impact. Right. But uh, if you've got someone else lasing, then you can just lob the missile and go. Okay. The uh, IR Maverick has a TV seeker in the nose, basically a miniature targeting pod. And similar to how we were, how our pod does point track, it will also lock onto contrast. Right. And then track that 
all the way into impact by itself and it is truly fire and forget okay um and the that's the fox rock one right correct yep the main difference between the two seekers and why you would use one over the other is um the laser maverick will go directly at that laser so um if you can accurately point that laser you can guarantee an impact yep the tv mav uh may not lock exactly what you want it to lock so uh. say you've got um a tank sitting um in a tree line the maverick might lock onto the tank or it might lock onto a tree next to the tank and it could be uh quite difficult to tell exactly which it's going to go for because um, its seeker is a lot smaller than our targeting pod and doesn't have as high a zoom or resolution. Okay. Uh, however, uh, the TV map is truly fire and forget. So if you don't have someone else able to lease for you, then uh, you can use a TV map and still be able to lob it and leave. Um, yep. Whereas uh, the laser won't work, or the really both won't work in uh, heavy dust or fog, but the IR will be able to deal with more dust or fog than the laser will. Okay, yep. Um, there are older versions of the Maverick on other aircraft that are actually TV, not IR. Um, and they're limited to clear day operation, whereas right. the IR can work at night. So uh, IR is just the MAV, or IR is the MAV Foxtrot? Foxtrot. Okay, yeah. Okay. So... Uh, I see they've got codes and stuff as well. Yeah. So if yeah. you box MAV, yep. uh, one on the left, You'll see uh, 1111 below its station. Yep. If then you hit UFC, you can plug in a code. Yep. And we'll just go with the default of 1688. Uh, 1688. Enter. Updated. Yep. Sweet. Cool. So that's pretty much that missile all set up. Um, actually. Yeah, that's all we can do on the ground. Um, okay. We'll be able to set up its fusing uh, in the air, but it's just the same as the bombs, instant or delayed. Okay. Uh, we uh, might as well set up our bombs as well, with uh, instant fusing and the uh, code as well, 1688. Uh, I've never set a code for... Uh, is that not L 82 LG? 82 LG, yeah. So, uh, Mark 82 laser guided. Mark 82 laser guided. And uh, CCRP? Uh, we'll go auto. Auto. Uh, fuse instant and code. 1688. 1688. Uh, not the JDAM, eh? Uh, so yeah, we'll go over to the JDAMs now. Yep. So, um, these work uh, quite a bit different to the laser-guided bombs. Um, so, uh, if you uh, see in right in the middle, uh, you've got the big safe, and then yep. below that, uh, you've got uh, something that's crossed out. And yes. below that, you've got Align Qual 09 UNST. Yes. So that's the GPS INS alignment quality of the weapon. So just like okay. the jet itself, the weapon has to align. Um, and it, it does that whenever um, J82 is boxed. Right. And you will lose it if you unbox it. Okay. Uh, so the quality is probably about zero 07 still unsat 
Now, as it counts down over the next three minutes or so, it'll go through marginal. There we go, it's marginal now. Yep. Now, uh, and then good. Um, I believe it can be launched at marginal, but it might miss. Right. Once it's good, it should hit if your coordinates okay. are good. Yep. Uh, in the top left, under mode, we've got PP or pre-plan, yep. and this is where you would punch in your coordinates beforehand, usually on the ground, for a known target. Right. Um, so, uh, if say there was like a, a big SAM site that we wanted to to destroy, and we had precise coordinates for each of the units, we could punch those in here, fly out, lob the weapons, and bug out without ever having to even see the target. Right, yep. Uh, but if we go mode TOO... Yep. So this is target of opportunity. So no, this way the weapon will interface with our little target diamond that we got before. Um, and automatically aim at that, basically. Right, okay. So, once we get our target diamond through whatever means we choose, be it um, ball and chain or teapot or whatever, um, in TRO mode, the JDAMs will be shooting at that. Okay. Um, so, uh, obviously, you have to find the target first, but um, if you're just out basically freelance hunting, then uh, this is the mode that you use. Yep. Uh, and then fusing is just the same, instant or delayed. Uh, and the other two options there on the left, I've never used. Okay. And uh, that is pretty much all the setup that you need to do with JDAMs in order to use them for targets of op opportunity. Okay, so let's just change the mode and set the fuse. Yep. All right. Cool. So we'll leave the pod where it is. Why is my book going down? Damn it. All right, so we'll leave the pod where it is. Um, we'll leave JDAM selected, so we'll use those first. And uh, get to taxiing. Right. You first. Uh, I'm going uh, right. Uh, yes, you're hanging. No, you're hanging left. Hanging left. All right, I'm moving. My uh, TV went off. Your pod. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I've. I've just got a, uh, looks like a HUD. It's not a HUD. Ah, and uh, on, at the bottom, uh, just above LST, does it say mask? At the bottom, mm. just, yes it does. Yeah, so the pod has tried to stay looking at where it was last pointed, but because the jet turned, the camera is basically staring into its own housing. Okay. If you double tap uh, your Nesbo steering button. Double tapped. Uh, no change. No, no change. Um, on the uh, right column in the middle, you've got VBST. The right column in the middle. Why aren't you working? No, I've got VVSLV, right column, middle. Yeah, it's not working for some reason. Oh well. Oh. We'll sort it out in the air. Okay. Probably some master mode thing. I think I need to set out a dead zone for my um, pedals as well. Because I literally just touch the thing and I'm moving to the left. Um, you can. Um, yep. I prefer not to, just so I have okay. that granular, granular control. Yeah, I guess I could get used to it, yeah. Uh, we're taking a right at this one. Yep. 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 
Also, uh, make sure your TACAN and Starlink are both on. Uh, I would if I knew how. <laughs> so, um, on your upfront controller, that keypad in front of you. Yes. Uh, the button's along the bottom. Uh, oh, yeah. So, TCN is TACAN. TACAN. On. Yep. And then D slash L is dead link. And that's just dead link and on as well? Yep. Excellent. 336 with point zero. Yep. Don't have to worry about all that. And yeah, I have you on dead link. Excellent. Cool. We're on the left. We're going on or we're going to wait here? Yep, we're going on. All right. I'm taking up the right side of the runway. Yep. Ready when you are. Alright. Up to 80%. Two. Great. Breaks off. Up to banana. And 400 will be the speed. Yep. Then we come out of burning there. Still in burner slightly. Oh. There you go. Up to? Uh, let's go uh, 11,000 feet. Losing a bit of speed here, so just nosing down a wee bit. Yep. Also, do you know how to use the uh, helmet mounted sight? No. So, just to the right of your right uh, screen is a knob labeled HMD. HMD, yep. Scroll that up. Scrolled up. And then oh, yep. look somewhere other than, other than the HUD. See it, yep. Yep. So... Now, this is a really powerful uh, thing. So, obviously, uh, you've got uh, your crosshair. Yep. Now, we uh, busted our altitude, by the way. Oh, sorry, did you say 10 or 15? 11. 11, beg your pardon, going down to 11. Yep. Because yep. uh, clouds are at 12. Uh, okay. And G pods can't see through clouds. Nice. Cool. So, um, so yeah, the HMD has all of this uh, really awesome symbology for you. So, it shows you your airspeed, your altitude, um, your heading tape, and uh, a whole bunch of other things. Yep. But you can also use it to designate with. So, uh, if you castle up into the HUD. Castle up, yes. And also go to Anagram Master Mode. Hang on, I'm just leveling out your... Uh, can I set my attitude thing for now? Is that, is that the way to go? Yep. So it's autopilot, attitude hold. Altitude hold. Oh, altitude hold. Is that yeah. BL? Yep. Barometric altitude. Okay, that's boxed. Yep. Sweet. Uh, 
Okay, sorry, I'm castled up. I've got my dot in my HUD. Yeah. So, if you now look somewhere and yes. TDC designate or TDC depress. Is that uh, the nipple button? Yep. Look it straight Nothing. in. And wherever you look, it should place a diamond. Okay, yeah, I'm not getting that. Your uh, air ground master mode and master armor. Negative. Air ground, air ground. Oh yeah, and it's it where I click. Yep. So, uh, and then uh, there's your steering to get rid of it. Usually, for some reason it's not working. Yeah, that's not working for me. Weird. Well. Uh, oh, I can't clear it. Yeah, that's weird. Um, not sure why that's why that's happening, but uh, so yeah, do you see that uh, cross runway to our left? Uh, I have the cross runway to the left. So stare at it. TDC deep press. Yeah, that worked. Yeah. So now. Oh, uh, sorry, I started spinning. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Now your pod should be looking at that area. Uh, uh, wait a second, my thing's gone to some radar thing, so switching back. Uh, is it, it's it flare menu two? Where the hell's menu one? Menu one. Oh, I don't know. Ah, uh, flare. Yep. Oh yeah. Very yeah. cool. Hey. So the pod will automatically look at a designated point. Uh, yes. You're descending, by the way. Thank you. I'll get back up to 11. 10 6 is fine. Alright. 10 7, wherever we are now. Just Altitude. all the clouds, oh. basically. Yep. Okay. And I'm also, holding. if you. Uh, Turn your head over towards the runway. Yes. You'll see a diamond and then what looks like an upside down staple. Yes, I see that, yep. So that staple is my designated point. Oh, nice. Okay. And that's what Data Link gives us. So if we turn slightly and start an, a nice lazy orbit around this point. All right. Left hand orbit going. Yeah. Can I hit uh, attitude hold? You can hit altitude hold and it will hold the orbit as well. Uh, so B alt is selected, so it'll hold this. Yep. Is that right? Okay, cool. Can I undo this? Oh, that thing's a bit far now. Can you what, sir? If, if I undesignate now, mm -hmm. am I able to do that? Yes, uh, I am. And then yeah. try, try to get more accurate with my helmet. Uh, well, you could use the helmet to get more accurate, or since the pod is already looking in the general direction, you can castle right to the camera and just slew it around. Oh, look at that. There you go. And you may have to play around with your bank angle uh, to uh, keep from masking the pod with uh, your weapons. Um, uh, yeah. Bit of an art, that one. But. Uh, once you're comfortable, you now you can start zooming in, looking around, see if you can find some targets. Zooming, uh, okay. Look around. Hey, hey that is so cool. Uh, I see some hot things by a building. Um, oh, yeah. No, lost sight. Uh, something came up and. Uh, oh, am I blocking the sensor with a weapon? Yep. All oh, right. Okay, it's back. I've got some heat things. What looks like near a building? Can I? Oh no, I've lost sight of them again. Yeah. So keep uh, keep playing around with the bank angle. You know, All right. To try and get uh, a clear view. Now, bear in mind, now the server has been up for uh, a little while, and yep. other people have been doing things at this range. So most of those hot things will be craters. Okay. Yeah. I've got. Well, it looks like trucks parked pretty well hidden, but uh, I don't know how to designate. I don't know how to lock onto it now, because if I if I undesignate, so my camera's going to move around there. Eh? 
So, uh, you should be in uh, INR mode at, at this point. INR, yeah. correct, yeah. So, that's your uh, INS stabilized mode. So, if right. once you've found a target that you're interested in, yeah. castle right into scene. Castle right into scene, yes. And now you have um, a uh, designated point directly on your crosshair. And now you can also castle right again and try and get a point track. All right. So then, can I can I designate now? So you already have. Yeah. So if I, do I have to undo that one? Nope. That right? So um, if you're not happy with uh, where the pod is pointing, yep. um, then uh, you can castle right into INR or scene, and keep slowing. And then uh, it'll yeah, yeah. automatically constantly update the uh, designated point okay and I can zoom in a bit more and I'll max zoom now yeah and also uh, take a note of the um, uh, in the top center that uh, uh, angle that it's telling you the camera's looking at Top center uh, minus 32 degrees to the left yeah so it's looking pretty much directly behind you right now so right. we'll have to uh, increase the bank of the turn and uh, start pointing back towards target okay so can I fly away first and come back or yeah, or should I yeah if you okay. want I'm doing straight up now yep and uh, you should see in your HUD about uh, 8.5 8.7 miles yep I can and, yep yep and you're uh, descending again ever so slightly oh did I click something off I did yeah so um, the uh, autopilot will uh, click off um, if you uh, move too violently Okay, parametric hold. Um, also, if you notice um, uh, on the camera screen that little velocity vector and horizon line. Yes. Uh, so the velocity vector doesn't move, the horizon line does. Okay. But uh, it's still the same as what it appears to be in the HUD. Yep. So if the horizon is above the velocity, or basically the velocity is below the horizon, that means you're diving. Okay. So, basically, pitch to get them uh, basically level with each other, and then you won't be diving. Excellent. Okay. So okay, I'm, I'm going to bring our start our left turn. We're 15 miles away. Yep. So go Another thing to note about uh, GPS guided bombs like JDAMs is now uh, once they're launched, now uh, that's it. Uh, okay. So uh, make sure your uh, your targeting point is accurate before releasing the weapon, because right. once it's gone, it's gone. You can't change okay. it. Unlike uh, laser weapons, now uh, because they're guided manually all the way into target. Um, you can sweeten the target all the way up into impact if you have to, or track the moving target. Yep. And uh, that's the the main uh, consideration why you would use laser or GPS bombs. Um, GPS uh, can be launched from much further away. Uh, in uh, different types of deliveries yep. um, and uh, truly fire and forget but they cannot be updated after launch so they uh, have to be launched against accurate coordinates and they cannot kill moving targets okay lasers uh, and also their GPS signal can be spoofed and jammed now right. laser guided bombs um, they can track a moving target but they require someone to have eyes on the target all the way in, up until impact, and they are defeated by cloud and fog and dust. Right. So my box is back on where I think the target is. There's a tree in the way now. That's yep. not good, right? Um, but that means it's it's ready to go. Is that right? Yep. Excellent. And you see uh, just under your... Um, 
uh, altitude on the right of your HUD. You've got a timer counting down. Clear man J2 TOR. I do. So that timer is counting down to the range that, uh, that the weapon will be able to guide to your currently designated point. Right. And if you look on your HSI, you'll see there's a little circle just out in front of us. HSI, a little circle. Uh, sorry, I've lost the HSI meaning. Oops. So center screen. Center screen. Map. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. I see the circle. Yep. So that circle designates the uh, uh, maximum theoretical range of the JDAM. Okay, I've got three seconds to go. Two seconds. Should yeah, I be doing but something? don't, don't oh, launch don't. yet. Oh, no. uh, because um, the JDAM is basically a glider with oh, no okay. wings, essentially. Yep. So um, the higher and faster you are, and the more yeah. directly you're pointing towards the target, the more oh. energy the weapon will have. Okay. And therefore, the greater range you'll be able to launch it at. So right. just stooging around at like uh, 370 knots. 10,000 feet like we are now, yeah. um, the range is very limited, but if we were uh, at like 40,000 feet Mach 1, we will be able to lob these things from like 20 miles away. Right, okay. So once you're happy with your uh, designated point with those trucks... I'm happy, yep. Yeah, so we'll uh, increase the range again, out to okay. about 15 miles, and right. then we'll turn in directly at the target, Okay. And we'll also push the speed up. Okay. And uh, you'll be able to see the difference in uh, in range that we get. And that circle on the HSI uh, changes dynamically. Okay. So uh, you may want to actually uh, zoom the uh, HSI in to 20 miles. HSI. Which is the top center button scale. Yep. And there's that dashed line to us, is that right? Yep, a, so that okay. dashed line is from us to the, the center of the designated point. Right. And there are two rings that will grow out from that point. The larger one is the maximum theoretical range. The smaller one is the minimum range. Okay. So essentially, uh, the max range is determined by how far the bomb can glide. The minimum range is determined by how quickly it can change direction. So if you were to drop this thing while directly over the target the bomb won't be able to change direction fast enough to basically go straight down okay and it will miss right but if you are high and fast enough now uh, it can be possible to overfly the target then drop and the bomb will have enough energy to turn back around right um, I believe in Desert Storm, um, F-16s uh, did uh, deliveries like that, where they would essentially come screaming over Baghdad at like 40,000 feet or more, and drop a spread of uh, JDAMs with pre-planned targets. Oh, right. And the spread was such that uh, the last bombs would be coming off after they passed over the city. Right. And essentially okay. each bomb peels off and goes and hits its own target. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Not for the dudes on the ground, but yeah. Mm. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's 60 miles away. Gonna start the turn in now? Yep. And point okay. directly at the target and push the speed up. Okay, left turn. And increasing too? Yep. And so 400, okay? Yeah. I heard the rumble of draft when it's... Yeah, I pushed <laughs> it in by mistake. <laughs> ah, cool. And the launch button is the pickup button, right? Correct. Okay. It will just launch one at a time. Yep. When I turn, do I turn too fast, too slow, or is this... Acceptable. No, this is fine. Okay, cool. The uh, the main thing to keep in mind when 
your flight lead is to be predictable. Okay. So, steep turns are fine so long as they're not erratic. Right. So that slow bank that you did was pretty damn good. Okay. So you should be able to see that diamonds in your heads up display. Yeah, I've got it flashing. Yeah. Yeah. And also side. you can look, uh, you can sort of look around the HUD with the helmet. Oh and yeah. You'll see it as well. So there we okay. go, pointing directly yep. at the targets. Overshot slightly, but... That's all right. So you notice we don't have an azimuth steering line this time? Yes. Because this is a guided weapon, so uh, we don't have to point the jet directly at the target. The weapon will guide itself. Okay. So uh, if you uh, basically just go to full mill. Full mill. I am. Uh, but I've got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. There you go. What speed do we want to get to? We don't care. We, just we, don't, we don't care. Just fast. Uh, all right. And uh, just uh, keep an eye on that timer. Countdown's coming down quick now. 16, 15, 14, 13. And yeah, once it reaches zero, wait yep. a couple of seconds extra to bank some energy and then release. Okay. So three, two, one. I'm in zone. Three, and release. Two, one. Release. Weapon away. Looking for it. Yep, Close and now it. you can uh, slow down again. Slowing so down. So idle power, air brakes out if you want. Air brakes out. So now out. basically the bomb will overtake us, which will let us keep uh, staring at the camera. Woo, sorry, I'm going to shoot past you. It's all good. So you'll be able to watch the bomb impact on the camera. And you should have a uh, time till impact on the herd as well. Uh, time to impact. Uh, uh. I'm watching the truck, so I don't see a time to impact anywhere. I'm too scared to look away from my screen in case I miss something. Mm. <laughs> Is it still flying? Should be. Okay. Oh wow. Did I hit anything? I'm still looking at my trucks and they look they look they're laughing at me. Yeah, it's still flying. Okay. I don't think it's gonna hit them though. Oh. Oh, I'm going to stall here, that's right. Yeah, it's gonna land about 300 meters short. Oh, wow. Hit the end of the runway though. Where are you? That's not good. Oh yeah, I forgot about smoke. I I see you. There we go, we're smoking. Whee. I'm just so. holding a northerly direction. Yep. I'm uh, directly in front of you now. Got you, yep. I'll hold 340 knots, 10,000 feet. So I should join you? Yep. All right. And uh, I'm going to uh, basically run in on that exact same profile. Okay. And see if I can figure out why your bomb didn't hit. Because, uh, yeah, you see um, see the end of the runway, now uh, basically short of the target. Yep. Your bomb landed pretty much directly on the end of it. Okay. An expensive mistake. Yeah, just a couple hundred thousand dollars. No big deal. Yep. I'm in your smoke. Yeah. <laughs> What's your speed? Uh, three, four, five. Oh god, I'm gonna come flying past you, slowing, trying to slow down. I don't know. I think I'm gonna be right on you.
But my screen has still got my um, truck selected, and so I'm wondering if I've stuffed something up. Um, it looked like it was tracking directly at the target. It just didn't have enough right. energy to make it. Oh, okay. So, um, maybe there was, uh, there's a new bug in, uh, in this new well, update. Um, is it the thing where you have to select GPS and not INS, maybe? Uh, no, because, um, I don't know, maybe. Yeah, we'll try that. So, GPS. You've you got dropped. Down. Fucking hell. Hook is up. Thank you. I think voice attack might be uh, screwing with me a bit. So you can drop that about. 420 knots. So I'll try and match that. Coming left now. Left. Mill power now. Power. And I'll also uh, let off that uh, Canamisha program we talked about. Okay. I can see you in my mirror. Yeah, I'm, I'll be all over the mirror. I'm moving, I'm flying all over the place yet. <laughs> yeah, you're doing pretty good. Uh, I've watched some Blue Angels videos and <laughs> this is pretty poor. <laughs> yeah, but the Blue Angels are like gods, so. Yep. <laughs> I have no idea how they do that. Well, part of it is they have uh, an extra spring on their stick that means they're constantly pulling against about 20 pounds of force. Right. Okay, rolling out. Still at mill power? Yep. Yep. Accelerating past. 470 knots. Yeah, just staring right at those trucks. Five, four, three, two, one, in zone. Five, four, three, two, one, weapon away. I see it. Idle power now. Feel free to use air brakes if you need them. Okay. I'm just watching you, so I, I have the trucks on my screen. Are you going for the same trucks? Yep. Dropping away, no, right. essentially in a loose formation with us. Okay. Okay. Oh, jeez, I've got a low battery one. Uh, yeah. How no, long? It, Short. It seems to have just petered out of energy. So we're dropping too early? Yeah. Or too high? Yeah. Yeah, it's just lost all its energy. Mine's gonna fall like half a case short. What the? Oh, did you drop as well? No, no, I didn't drop. Hmm. Let me else pull up down there for some reason. Oh, pushing power up. Yeah, stall. watching.
is somewhere else. Okay, I think I No. It's just us. That is weird. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry about that. Genems are usually a whole lot better than that. Well, we have to work work the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if we try if we try dropping earlier, uh, later. So instead of counting to five, counting to ten. Yeah. Alright. And four four three four eight. Holding. Uh, three four eight. Three four eight. Okay. Right. Uh, did you want to take lead again? Alright, yep. How do I move into the lead? Just overtake just, you. Just overtake me, yeah. Okay, burn. I'll lead burn, alright? Uh, no, just uh, push it up to mill and you'll slowly overtake me. Alright. Uh, which side are you coming from? Uh, sorry, you're right. Copy, see ya. Alright, that's more than fast enough. Yep. <laughs> Bring it back. And locking at, what did you say? Three? Uh, three, four, seven. Or three, four, seven. Thereabouts. Slowing down. And 350. Copy that. Uh, cheating with barometric hold. It's not cheating. It's using uh, using the plane. I got yeah. it. All right. All right. So. So, so yeah. Uh, turn back towards the target. Uh, anytime you're ready. And uh, okay. yeah, we'll wait uh, a good few seconds after in zone. Right. See if we can get this last JDM on target. Okay, just making sure my weapon's ready. So I've got J82 selected. It's selected. It's ready, and that target's still selected. So there's nothing else I have to do, right? Nothing else you have to do. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, starting left turn. Three, two, one, go. Yeah. And once you're uh, turned in towards the target, uh, you can uh, use the camera to sweeten the uh, the aim if you need to. Okay. Because uh, while the pod is masked, it reverts to an INS mode. Because you know, oh. it's got nothing to track. Um, so okay. it still says it's in scene, but it's yes. only tracking by INS. Okay. So by the time it's unmasked again, it may have drifted. Alright. So at the moment I'm on scene, but the black screen, although it's showing me 35 meters, it's showing me the big, the sort of the big box with the yep. lines at top and bottom. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, okay, uh, there we so go. it's currently masked by the housing, okay. so it's doing its best to stay pointing where it was. Okay, it's looking promising. I'm seeing the trucks in the middle of the box, but we're quite far away, so yeah. I can't tell how accurate it is. So when we get closer, yeah. um, uh, how do I move the camera a bit? Can I move it? Will I be able to move it now, or do I have to change to... No, you can move it in oh. scene just okay. fine. Okay, striping up. Cool. And I've overshot it again, so coming back a bit. That's all right. Don't have to be completely accurate, but you are descending. Yeah. Uh, now I know what the dd dd means. It's a disengaging. Yep. All right. And okay, so I've got the big box, but it's it's quite a big area, 26 meters across. Mm-hmm. So that yeah, uh, that 26 meters is the length of that line above it. So that lets right. you judge the size of things in the camera view, camera field okay. view. So basically, put that little dot on whatever it is you want to kill. Uh, that little dot in the middle of the crosshair. I think it's right on a vehicle at the moment. Cool. So that should be all we need. So push up the speed push and up speed. wait a good few seconds after you get in zone. All right. Just a bit worried about the little dot. I don't see the dot, but I think it's because it's over a, a yeah. heat sort. I can't yeah. see it. Okay. All right. Just coming to the right a little bit, or mm -hmm. do you just need to be ballpark? Just need to be ballpark, really. So okay. we're in zone. It's flashing now because it's going underneath my nose. Yeah, and release now. Release. Released. So I can F6 now? 
or uh, come out of. Uh, so yeah, if uh, you just stick your Sorry, autopilot no. on, we can F6. Yeah. Slow down, but. Oh wow, it's fun. It's wafting sound. Oh, it looks like it's going to go flying way over, is that right? Yeah, it's pulling up, okay. up and it's up and up and up. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. It should nose down. It's spotting too. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't try to stall out like that. It should just pitch down, because the faster it hits the target, the uh, Oh, did you drop as well? I did, but oh, I okay. thought I was... My weapon was behind yours. No, oh, mine's nowhere. Mine's gonna hit the same spot it hit last time. Oh no, what's it doing? Uh, no idea. Uh, that was weird. Alright. You're there behind me. I'll form up on you. Alright. What's your speed? Uh, 390 in the box. Oh, probably why I'm gonna come flying past you. Oh yeah. no, I've, I think I've released flares by mistake. <laughs> yeah, I'm releasing. <laughs> oh yeah. So, yeah, that that was the, um... Uh, oh, the wrong button. That was that uh, Catamotion's program that we set up. Yeah. Uh, program 2. So if you like, I can demonstrate those for you right now. Yep. So, program two, as we set up, was the one player every second for 10 seconds. And go. Nice. And then program five was the, uh, program five was the, Two every quarter of a second or five. What? Is this one. Oh yeah, checks a lot out. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. Alright, uh, I'm gonna start a left turn here so we don't crash into these mountains. That was very, very strange behavior from that bomb. They've broken something. Yeah, I think they might have. Because, um, I've never seen JDAMs pull up like that before. Um, previously, what they would do is, um, they would just nose down and basically drop themselves down into the target. Which is what you want, because um, then they've got more kinetic energy when they hit. Yep. Man, it's strange. Let's see if the laser guided ones do the same thing. For the laser guided ones, uh, you'll need to switch on your laser, which is that center switch down by your right hip. Or right uh, hip. Armed? Armed, yep. Rolling out. And these weapons uh, do have an asthma steering line. Okay. But uh, the. Uh, Trucks are uh, currently very, very dead because yes, I, I hit them. Nice shot. So, uh, How come you managed to hit? I'm not entirely sure. But oh. uh, there they are. So if you go to TV mode and uh, look to the right down the runway. Okay, hang on. Uh, can I? To the right on the runway, yes. You should see uh, a group of tanks down there. Little 
black black smudges. Uh, I, s I see tanks. I see three, four. Yep. So I'm going to go for the leftmost one. You go for one of the others. Okay. And you should be able to get a point track on one of them. Okay, this is the part I'm struggling a little with. I'm moving around the screen. Yeah. Uh, can I... How do I... Yeah. Put the dot on the tank and then castle right. And it will attempt a point track. Uh, and then if you get two little vertical lines, then you've got a good track. Okay, just hang on. I'm gonna have to Otherwise, you can just leave it in scene. Point it at the tank. And then fly your as a steering line, and then basically drop it as any other order delivery. So once five seconds to release, hold the pickle button. You all good? Uh, I think so. Uh, oh, I haven't selected a weapon yet. Which ah, one that'll do it. All right. Paveway one. Uh, is that uh, Mav F? No. So it'll be 82 LG. 82 LG. So Select. I've got a weapon away right now, so um, you're a bit late for this pass, but we'll get you on the next one. Okay. So with your laser armed, dropping a laser weapon, it yeah. will automatically fire the laser at the appropriate time. Check. You, sh you killed everyone. I may have. Sorry about <laughs> that. That's all right. We'll... Uh... Yeah. Oh, no, there's one more there. So oh yeah, that's the guy I've got released. I've got released now. Sorry, I've released because it just told me to release. Uh, it won't track. We're too far. Oh, uh, shit. Sure. Okay. So, because the laser is coming from your own aircraft, you yeah. will need to have the camera on the target the entire way in. So, if you want to uh, slowly overtake me... I think I've killed the dude. Hang on. Killed him. That one missed completely. Oh, I've got a uh, T90 destroyed. And I, and I watched it go straight into the top of the tank. Uh, it didn't hit the tank. It uh, oh. hit about uh, 300 meters long of him. Uh, I think he may have been fragged from mine. Oh, but I went to F6 and I, I followed the thing into the top of the tank. Is there someone else here? Possibly, but I, I, I definitely watched the, the thing go straight into the roof of it. Huh, weird. Huh. I wonder if our game's out of sync or something. Maybe, that, that'd be interesting. Okay. Uh, I'm slowing down to uh, 350. Okay, I'm trying to form up on you now. And a uh, lazy left turn. So just uh, double check that uh, laser switch again. Laser switch has gone to safe. Yeah, it does that. Okay, and I can't arm it at the moment. It's flicking back. Hmm. Let me try again. Uh, make sure you've got a weapon selected. Oh no, there, it went to arm. First time it clicked back, but now it's armed. Nice. you there you are I'm trying to catch up to you yeah so if you cut inside my turn you'll be able to catch up a lot quicker okay okay I'm gonna cut back outside because now I'm catching up very quick yeah <laughs> so that's was... uh, that's pursuit geometry at, and oh. that was flares <laughs> no. yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. so speed break is the square switch Okay. Yeah, boat ship switches countermeasures. And what was that speed again, sorry? Uh, 355. 355. Rolling out now. Let's see, where are these other targets? 
There they are. Right, so if you overtake me. Okay. I'm trying. Okay, I'm passing in your right soon. See you. So, if you see the uh, burning wreckage that we just created, I see it. If you go right and look at uh, about a fifth of the way down of the other runway, uh, so okay, you've got right. the other runway threshold in some trees. Look to the right of the trees. Okay, hang on. This is where I'm battling a bit, so I can't move my thing because I've got the little uh, dot in the middle with two lines on the side. Okay, so, so castle oh, right. Oh, Across the right. And right again until you get seen. Uh, I have seen, yep. Yep. Uh, moving around, uh, zooming back. Sorry, I'm not watching you at the moment. Is that yep, okay? It's all good. It's all good. I'll edit the whole thing in a second. Ah, moved all very fast. <laughs> uh, zooming back. Oh, I see, yep. Yep, you got the targets. I. Th no, I don't actually. Hang on, sorry. I'm about to fly over it, eh? Yep, that's okay. Yes, I see the targets at the end of the runway. Yep. Yep, cool. Uh, so they're not right on the end of the runway. They're uh, a bit back from the runway. Uh, okay, I've got, I must be looking at the wrong ones. I see the ones I think you're talking about. Yep. Yep, so they're definitely alive. Uh, I was trying to zoom in. Nope, I'm looking at holes. Hang on a second. <laughs> Look at the wrong ones. All right. Uh, we've yep. just overflown them, so... Yep. Okay. So uh, we'll uh, extend out and come around again. I'm joining on your left. I'm still looking for things down there. Hang on, I see the flames, I see holes. Uh, your camera's about to occlude, so... Okay, yep, alright. Yeah. You can just get a bit of distance here, give me... Yeah. You're doing very well. Oh, I don't know. I haven't hit anything yet. Oh, I hit something by mistake, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but as, as far as, like, operating the pod and uh, flying the aircraft at the same time, Oh yeah, that's hard work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, altitude holds. Come back. The pilot. Now imagine how difficult it would be uh, to uh, fly and use something like a, a bullpup missile. Your speed What's breaks that? out, by the way. Oh shit. Oh, run one. <laughs> Square switch, not boat switch. There you go. Uh, I'm looking for you, I see you. Yeah. So do you know what the bullpup missile is? No, I don't. It's uh it was an early smart weapon, um big ass air to ground missile, and it was radio controlled. So not radar guided, radio controlled. It was basically a model aircraft. Nice. Yeah. So poor pilot has to fly his own jet, launch the missile, and then use another control stick to manually fly the missile at the target. Okay, so he's flying two aircraft at the same time. Yeah. And the <laughs> missile has a big flare in its ass. So you're basically right. flying this burning flare down towards the target All right. whilst <laughs> flying your own jet. <laughs> Yeah. The um, the AGS-37 Biggin in DCS has uh, a weapon very similar, the uh, RB-05. Right. So uh, if you ever got the Biggin, you could uh, give that a shot. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me get used to this easy stuff first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, easy modern stuff. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just put the thing on the thing and press the button. Yeah. So we've, we've got these mountains below us. Are they going to obscure our view for a while? Uh, they might. Yep. Um, but uh, not for terribly long. So okay. can, uh, we can you turn any time. All right. Is a right turn okay with you? Yeah, that's fine. All right. So right turn. Now. Oh, what is that beep? That was the RWR, uh, new contact sound. Okay. So 
probably one of the ships. Yeah. I see in that little green at the bottom a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of green in the, the four o'clock position now. Yeah. And if uh, you look away from the HUD, you'll see a whole bunch of stuff at the right edge of your helmet as well. See it, yep. Yeah, so those uh, are the same uh, RWR contacts just repeated on your helmet. Right. And they will change their azimuth as you look around. So if you look out towards the coast, you'll see those ticks go towards the top. Yep. And that tells you that they're off in that direction. That's pretty helpful. Yeah, and uh, I'm seeing an E3, uh, a unit, yeah, a P, a 40, a couple 40s actually. Basically, the uh, the E3 is the AWACS aircraft. The rest of yep. them are um, various naval radars. Right. Okay. Is uh, the carrier fleets out there? And you're right. The uh, ground has uh, obscured our target yep so uh, just uh, fly over the mountains and should get our target back fairly soon yeah but this is zoomed very far back so yeah all right so we should be able to see the target now so so across the right is that right to to go to point track so uh from here, the targets are just outside of a stand of trees. You got that? Yes, uh, I see the trees. Yep. Uh, just so from the center of the runway. Center of the runway, yep. So go long of us towards the road and slightly right, and there's a cluster of four vehicles. I see some black things, yep. Yep. So pick one of the vehicles, tell me which one it is, so I don't go for the same one. Uh, can I zoom in a lot more here? Cause I'm uh, if oh, you're... Yeah. Uh, no, no, sorry, I'm looking at some fire. Uh, I'm looking for vehicles, hang on. So from the yeah. And I'm picking the uh, the one closest to us on the, on the left. Copy, I'll go for the closest one to us on the right. Alright. And then, so put the little dot over him and castle right to get a point track. Two Point track lines. meaning it's the two vertical uh, uh, cross right again. Then. Yep, two vertical lines. Two vertical lines on either side of the target. Yep. yep. Cool. And now you can fly your azimuth steering line. Okay. Come a little bit left. 64 seconds to release, right? Yep. And you're going to. Go. So just double check your laser switch. Laser switch is armed. Nice. So yeah, at uh, five seconds to go, you'll start holding the pickle button, and then the weapon will come off when it's ready, and then you're going to hold straight and level, and make sure the camera stays pointing at the target, because the jet will automatically fire the laser when it's time. Okay, so at five seconds, hold down. Correct. The plane wants to go uh, to the left. Actually, I'm not going to launch, because we're on the same laser code, so the weapons will get confused. So you'll only want to drop the weapon this time. Yep. And you'll probably kill them all like I did last time. Nice. So ten seconds. Second. At five seconds, pick a button down. Holding. Yep. Line Three, coming down. Two one and Release. weapon away. Yep. Slow down, is that right? Uh, no, you can just hold this speed and hitting. Okay. Make sure the uh, camera stays centered. Camera is centered. Cool. So I'm, ju I'm just okay. watching the roof of a truck at the moment, it's flashing. Yep. yep, so that means the laser is firing. Yep. Impact! Oh. Very nice. That looked painful. <laughs> that looked very, very painful. <laughs> awesome. Sweet. All right, so okay. now you can uh, castle right uh, to get rid of the point track. Uh, I've got a black screen now. Yep. yep. So uh, if the uh. camera gets occluded when you're yep. in point track, it'll revert to INS area track. Okay, yeah, I've just... Mine's just gone black. Is that right? Yep. And uh, yep. in the bottom left, you should see INR scene. Uh, I've got INR auto. Uh, I've got INR scene now. Yep. Yep. 
So it's uh, it's reverted. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'll spawn some yet more targets. I'm not getting to grips with this castle left, castle right. When I should be doing that, for some reason. So it's only castle right. Um, and uh, so what? It's bingo. Doing. Bingo. Thank you, Betty. Um, so castle right initially gets you the diamond which assigns your hotess controls to that screen and yep. then first uh, further castle right uh, changes the track mode of the camera uh, got it okay okay and so when you want to be close and trying to pick your your item th that's the bit which yeah so uh, scene is the best mode to uh, slew around looking for targets yep. because that's uh, the most stable right um, and then uh, if you can once you've found your target get a point track then that basically locks onto that specific object rather than just the entire screen okay so in scene whatever you're looking at we, I, I keep thinking I'm supposed to press this designate button on my uh, root finger but no that that's that's not required not required because yeah, right. it automatically updates whenever the camera moves. Okay, got that. Um, what that will do is if you're in point track mode, and this is actually probably what happened with your last JDAM. So yeah. if you're in point track and you hit designate, you'll get another little cross, and then yeah. you can slew that around separately. Right. And that's an offset. Um, to a, a GPS offset cross. So what that lets you do in real life, now, um, what that lets you do in real life is uh, get a good solid point track on something in the scene, um, and then slew the offset onto the target you actually want to hit. Uh, because in real life, you may not always be able to get a point track on uh, the specific target that you want, but you might be able to get one nearby. Right. Uh, so I think that's maybe what happened with your last JDAM is you were in point track on the trucks, um, TTC depress, and then accidentally slewed that offset cross off somewhere. Yeah, right. Okay, starting up right hand turn, going back. Copy. And uh, you have no more bombs left, so if you select Mav F. Mav F, selected, and stand by, yeah. Mav F again. Mav F again, oh yeah, that's, so I'm looking at the screen. Okay. Yeah. So now what you're looking at on your left screen is what the Maverick itself is seeing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to find our target on the right screen yep and then castle left to left screen and that will automatically uncage the maverick seeker and it will stare at what the pod stares at right and once we're happy that they're both looking at the same thing then we just pickle button and launch the missile okay so still coming around Okay. Oh, so it's striping. Yep. So you should see column of smoke on your okay. right screen. I see smoke and fire. Yep. Yep. Just looking for the targets now. My butt be eaten out of them. <laughs> Almost. Uh, I've got a warning sound. Whoop, whoop. Uh, that was the radar altimeter. Uh, okay. Oh, did you go underneath me? Yep. <laughs> got them. All right. So, from the fire, go up to the far end of that same runway. Uh, yep. To the end of the runway. Yep. And they're hidden just in the trees. You may have to switch oh, the fire. Okay, switching to R. Ah, uh, yeah. 
Yep, got them? Yes. Alright, so uh, see if you can get a point track on one of them now. Yes. Cool. And then castle left to the Maverick. Castle left to the Maverick. Oh, it moved. There we go. Probably onto it. Yep. Yep. So now we're going to fly in until we're less than eight miles away. Just confirming my Maverick is currently crossed out at the top. Yep, that's okay. Okay. So fly into eight miles. Yep, and then uh, the uh, red switch at the bottom of your throttle. We're going to go that one aft to uh, try and uh, lock. Hang on a second. So, never mind. Yeah, never mind. So that switch forward will zoom the Maverick in. Did I do that? Yeah. Yeah. And the Maverick crosshairs should be completely closed now. Oh, shit, I pulled it back. What have I done? Uh, pull it back again. Pull it back again. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, now push it forward. Forward. And the crosshairs should be completely closed. Uh, they are... Pickle. I think. Pickle. Rifle. Whoa. Rifle is. Off it goes. So can I have sex onto that? So now the Maverick is tracking whatever target it decided it wanted to lock onto right. and it is completely independent at this point okay so I'm just Did looking at my screen to see what it hits I'm watching the result yeah they me looking promising it's looking more promising looking very promising somebody's gonna die Ooh, Shaq. Were you going <laughs> for the rightmost target? The rightmost target. Nice. Very, very good. He's in flames. What a shame. Yeah. That was that was pretty good. <laughs> so how so do you know when you can release? That part I didn't work out. I just fired when you said. How so, did you know? um, things went a little bit faster. Couldn't get that one out in time. Uh, okay. Mavericks have... Um, a max effective range of about eight miles. Um, the right. higher and faster you are, um, the greater that will be. But generally, within eight miles, will guarantee a hit. Um, within five Hello. miles, will drastically reduce the flight time. Right. Uh, the Maverick is quite a slow missile because you know, it's big and fat and doesn't have a big motor. Right. Um, so yeah. Um, you uh, you have the um, range the target in your HUD. So basically once that cuts down below eight, just assuming the Maverick is locked and tracking, basically crosshairs completely closed, then you can launch. Right, okay, okay. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I am at bigger fuel. Yeah, I'm at uh, 2,000 pounds myself. All right. uh, we have one more missile. Um, yep. The uh, the laser maverick. So, laser uh, maverick. did you want to loose that yeah. up or? Let's do it. Yeah, sweet. Get some more target. Oh, fuck that. Oh. There we go. So we'll keep flying out. Uh, so now you can select your other maverick. Selected. And again. Selected. Oh. So this is the laser maverick screen. Nice. Okay. So that big one six eight eight is the code that it's looking for. Yep. And uh, on the left is your fusing options, defaulted to instant. And yes. You've got a couple of delays. Um, on the right, you've got UFC, where you can change the code if you need to. Okay. Yep. So. Uh, the process for this one is uh, pretty well similar. So we're going to find the target on the right screen with uh, the G-Pod. Yep. Castle left over to the Maverick screen, yep. which should automatically uncage the weapon, which you can tell in the top right where it currently says caged. 
Yeah, so that will point the seeker head at the same point as the target. And then when you press the pickle button, the laser will automatically fire, the missile will lock on, and then launch by itself. And then we just keep the pod on target until impact. Right. Cool. So we're about 20 miles away, so turn back in whenever you're ready. Okay, left turn, starting 221 now. Going up, up on my left screen. Uh, I've got a cross going up. Oh, there's a cross moving around my screen, on my left screen. Fuel now. Uh, is now. the Maverick caged or uncaged? Uh, uncaged. Okay. So it's currently in doing a search path. So it's okay. basically looking every which way it can to try and find a uh, a later spot on that code one six eight eight. Right. And you would do that if someone else was lasing for you. Okay, got it. So, uh, that uh, uh, bottom red switch on your throttle, pull that aft to cage the seeker. Pull it aft. Uh, it still it's says uncaged with the timer 17, 16. Uh, push it forward. Should cage it? No. Nope. Neither. Ah, you're probably uh, still uh, TDC to the. Uh, I think about I had I left side, yeah. Uh, okay, uncaged. Uh, it's now caged. Yeah, cool. Have I ever shot the turn? I have, sorry. Uh, have. Uh, That's uh, right. Turning right. right. Yep. yep. Expecting the targets to be left of our last targets. Okay. Sweeten that up once we get rolled out. They're rolling out now. Okay. Yep, they are. And they're behind the trees again. Woo! Nice. So, if you look to the left, uh, towards the threshold of the other runway, just uh. in the trees there. Just make out one of the guys in uh, IR. In IR, searching. Oh, I can see one one vehicle. Yep. Yep. So if you can get a point track on him, uh, you might not be able to. He's uh, included by the tree. That's okay. Ah, oh yeah, I got one. No. 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 Alright, uh, do your best with just scene, basically put the dot on him. Then castle left to the Maverick. Uh, hang on, I'm strong on scene. Why is it not moving? Ah, uh, because I'm pressing the wrong one. Uh, castle right. Oh, I've got the, I've, yeah, I've locked the one on the right. Yep, castle left to the Maverick. Castle left. Maverick. Red switch aft to uncage. Red switch aft, uncaged. And we're within eight miles, so press and hold the pickle button until it releases. Press and holding. Whoa. Rifle. F6. Right. Now just make oh. sure the pod stays pointing at the target until impact. Oh, okay. So we'll stay in the aircraft this time and just watch. Yep. In fact, I'll watch the missile for you. I've got 33, a uh, countdown, is that countdown to laser? Is that how long it's going to take to hit? Uh, it's uh, countdown to impact. Okay. Laser is already firing. Uh, 18, 17. 3, 2, 1. Uh, oh! It's not bad. Kaboom. Nice. Alright, we are out of gas. Speed we are, yep. <laughs> 900, 930. Oh shit, I'm at still uh, 1300. Alright. Alright, so Kobaletti is our low 2 o'clock. Low 2 o'clock, so I'm gonna. Can I start my right hand turn now for a left hand pattern? 
McCarthy. Yep. And throttle's idle. Let's try and save a bit of that fuel. So what do you think of that? It was awesome. Except for the first one. Yeah, those g lambs are really wonky. That's pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, 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 just because we achieved Altitude. success on this one doesn't mean <laughs> I'm going to remember all that yet. <laughs> There's a lot going on there. but There is uh, quite a lot going on there. Yeah. Okay, it's coming down, full flaps. There's Whoa. the flaps. Gee. They came down a bit quick, didn't they? No, but it's something weird. Um, my trim button is so sensitive. Something's changed a lot here. Wow. Oh, something, something's very different here. Oh, jeez. I'm not going to be able to stay with you. Oh, uh, too slow? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I'm still too high, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. All right, I'm breaking off doing my own thing. Okay. I don't know what's going on. My, a little touch on my um, pitches, on my uh, pitch trim is throwing me all over the place. Hmm, that is weird. Mine's all right. Remember to turn off your smoke. Thank you. I've lost sight of you, I had you. I'm a uh, medium final for 2 4. Okay. Oh, I see you. Is it okay if I'm not too far behind you? Yeah, I'll be fine. I'll stay left. Okay. What's your fuel state, by the way? Uh, 660. Oh, wonderful. Got about Plenty. a minute. <laughs> Seems back to normal now. I don't know what was going on there. Hmm. Oh, it's perfect. Wheels down. Down. So, I notice you're sort of flaring and right. putting it down nice and easy. Yeah. Uh, in the Hornet, you basically just fly it straight into the ground. Okay. So, um, right as you're about to touch down, bring the power to idle, pull out full air brakes, 
and slowly bring the stick all the way back. Right. Ooh. And that'll basically, uh, and then also start using uh, toe brakes. Yeah. And that basically puts as much up into the airstream as possible and lets you slow down as fast as possible. Right. What's your fuel state now? 500. Yes. Plenty. Plenty. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't have to go around. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been uh, climb straight ahead and yeah. punch out once your feet wet. And how'd you find uh, slewing the camera around? Oh, way better. I think, I think, yeah, there was definitely a problem. Mm. And I think you've solved it. I increased. Bingo, bingo. <laughs> Poor Tiffany. Feel low. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Gosh. Oh, brakes, brakes, what are you doing? I'll, I'll just go in front of you. <laughs> um, what's your uh, anti-skid set to? Anti-skid is on. Okay. No, I had to throttle up a bit by mistake. Then. Ah. Not, not clever. <laughs> Coordination required. Oh no, I just tried to lean on the bloody edge. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <There's no laughs> edge. <laughs> oh man, I've done uh. that. I've done that before. Thankfully, uh, my chair's got armrests on it, so I sort of can. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was really good. It um, was really good. Oh, uh, check seat. Has uh, your seat not been armed this entire time? No. <laughs> I really need a checklist. <laughs> uh, where is that checklist? It's menu... Menu 2 menu checklist. Menu 2 yeah. checklist, yeah. And seat arm is one of the items. All right, yeah, I should probably look at that. Don't mind. <laughs> Okay, I'm, just lose battery. I'm going to try to uh, remember as much as possible, mm -hmm. and then hopefully we can try that again later with, with me knowing what I'm doing a little bit more. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. So is Raz going to be on, so we can bomb him, or? Um, I don't think he's going to be on this weekend, because he's going right. to work. Um, okay. I think his schedule changes for the better next week, though. Okay. All right, hopefully I've just got to go and sort some stuff out, but I'll definitely be on a bit later, and hopefully around, and we can do something pretty similar again. Hell yeah. Maybe have coming shoot back at us. <laughs> well, but those guys would have shot back at us if we got closer. Oh, okay, cool. Then I feel better. <laughs> I felt like we were killing unarmed people. <laughs> <laughs> they, they were like full-on tanks. Yeah, sweet. They have no chance. It's those little dudes with the rockets on their shoulders. They were killing me the other day. Yeah, uh, man pads are quite insidious because they're an IR missile, so they don't right. give you any launch warning. So mm. you basically just have to see it now yeah. to defeat it. Yep. Nice. Or stay out of its envelope. Right, what do you say, 12,000? 12, 12, uh, yeah, about 12,000. Okay. And also use those kind of mission programs that we set up. Um, also, yep. I'll send you a link to that. Um, and I'm just add on dice so yes. you can set up the programs on the special menu. Okay, yeah. Because there's a lot of setup there, which is. There is. Yeah. And um, in, uh, in different aircrafts, you know, it uh, can get quite a fat. Yeah, um, yeah. Like uh, the A10C, for example, it has 27 different countermeasure programs that you can possibly set up. Oh, right. Yeah. And it's not just trap and flares, but also several different jammer modes. Oh, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the APU on this thing? Oh, there we go. I think I might put my APU on and cut my engines, because I'm um, The on. APU doesn't give you uh, electrical power. It only oh. gives you uh, hydraulic and pneumatics. Oh, okay. All right, fantastic. That was cool, I feel overloaded. 
<laughs> I'll, uh, I'll send you a message. It shouldn't be too long. Uh, I think I've just got to be a taxi for a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, hopefully we can do something cool. Cool. See you then. Thanks very much for the effort eh, and the time and putting up with my, <laughs> my uh, <laughs> lots of questions. It's nothing to put up with. I really enjoy it. Excellent. Thanks very much. We'll see you soon. See you soon. All right. Ciao.